How's it going guys? I'm James from KitGuru and today we're looking at this absolute monster of a PC case from Thermaltake. This is the AH-T600 and we saw this first at CES earlier this year and it's been designed, or according to Thermaltake, it has been designed around an attack helicopter theme. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm no expert on attack helicopters, but I suppose this kind of front panel design it almost resembles maybe like an Apache helicopter cockpit. I'll leave that up to you to decide. The AH-T600 is available to purchase now. You can get it in two different colours. There's a white version and there's also obviously the black version that we have for review today. The black one is priced at around the 250 to £255 mark depending where you look and the white version carries a little bit more of a premium that's closer to the 265 to 270 pound mark. So as you can probably see this is an absolute beast of a case it's a full tower design and if you're thinking of picking one of these up and maybe you know having it on your desk next to your monitor you may just want to have a look at the size of your desk and the kind of weight that it can carry. From the front to back the extreme measurements it measures around about 730 millimeters and then the height of it is around 630 to 650 millimeters. So this is technically a chassis rather than a case and it's got a completely open frame design all the way along the tempered glass there's air ventilation gaps same along the bottom that extends right to the front and then you've got obviously more ventilation along the front panel. The top panel it also has a kind of honeycomb mesh design so there's plenty of air ventilation therefore heat to rise out of the top and then as you can see the back of the case that is completely open. So the chassis actually arrives kind of semi-assembled. This top panel and both the tempered glass side panels are not installed so you have to fit them yourself. It's not a really big deal, they're really quite simple to fit. As you can see the tempered glass panels you just take out the really quite big and beefy uh, thumb screws and then these just open up on a hinge and simply lift off so they're really easy to install and then this top panel you just have to undo four slightly smaller thumb screws and then once you've got the thumb screws removed this just kind of lifts off and then that allows you access to this top panel where you can either install three 120mm fans to 140mm fans or up to a 360mm or a 280mm radiator. On the front I.O. panel you've got plenty of options. There's the usual power and reset buttons as well as a power LED, hard drive LED. There's also two 3.5mm HD audio jacks, one for headphone, one for microphone. There's a single USB 2.0 type A connection, two USB 3.0 type A's and then a single USB type C connection. So the chassis is primarily manufactured from steel. The chassis frame is of a kind of sheet steel that is slightly thicker to your traditional mid-tower cases and then this bottom panel, these vents and then the front panel that's made from a thicker sheet steel. You've also got these two kind of side pods or helicopter engines they could be. They're made from a plastic material as well as the top half of the front panel that is also a plastic material with three tempered glass panels inside. So because this is an open frame design there's obviously plenty of space inside to install high-end components and kind of extreme or unique custom water cooling systems as well as the 360mm radiator mounting at the top. You've also got at the right hand side of the motherboard another position there to install either 320mm fans, 240mm fans or up to a 360 or 280mm radiator and then at the front of the case behind this plastic front panel there's also space for another either four 120mm fans, three 140mm fans or a 480mm radiator. So to access that front radiator mounting position you need to first remove these six screws and then once you've removed the six screws from down the side you just need to prise the front panel off that just clips into place and then there are two 
thumb screws to remove from the top. Take out both of the thumb screws. And then you just tilt the, tilt the bracket backwards and then just simply lifts out. So you can then fit your fans in here or your radiator first and then put it back into place. So we spun the case round so you can get a look at the right hand side panel. It is virtually identical to the left hand side but obviously you can see the motherboard tray a little bit closer. There's still this same plastic trim panel here and then a 5mm tempered glass side panel. Uh, at the bottom of the case is a power supply cage that's removable, it just slides into position and then is secured in place with a thumb screw. Again the tempered glass panel is held on with this large thumb screw and then it just opens up on the hinge and just slides out. In terms of storage drive support you've got this removable hard drive bracket on the back of the motherboard. You can install either three 2.5 inch drives on these caddies provided or you can remove the caddies and install two 3.5 inch drives here or alternatively use these caddies and then they can be installed to the right hand side of the motherboard and fixed into place there instead. Another part of the case that is removable is the PCIe bracket so that can be fitted back into the case in either a vertical or horizontal orientation so that obviously allows you to mount your graphics card either horizontally or vertically and actually the whole motherboard tray that is also removable there are three thumb screws that hold it in the top and three in the bottom and then you just simply slide it out towards the back and then you can put that on your bench get your motherboard cpu ram even the cooler installed into that and then just slide it all back in in one big unit so obviously the AHT600 is kind of designed to show off like big and unique extreme water cooled systems and that's kind of what we would have liked to have done today but unfortunately because of everything that's going off at the moment that just logistically wasn't possible but we still do have a high end system to build inside. We've got a TRX40 Aorus Master motherboard, a AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3970X, uh, 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Triumph Z RGB memory. Graphics will be a Gigabyte RTX 2070 Super Gaming OC card. And then power will be supplied by a Seasonic Prime PX850 power supply. And for cooling, we're using a Thermaltake Flow DX360 TT Premium Edition all in one CPU cooler. So let's get on and see how the build goes.
So we've got the system installed, everything's up and running and working as it should be. It was actually a bit of a task to build a system inside the AH T600 and most of the time was taken up by cable management. That's something that I'll get onto in a bit. You probably saw from the time lapse video, I spent quite a bit of time on the cable management. One thing that I need to mention first is there's no pre-installed fans that are supplied with the case. So the ones that you can see inside there are 320 mil fans from the all-in-one CPU cooler and then we've added three extra Thermaltake Ring 14 140 mil fans, two in the front and then one in the top. So you can probably see that there's absolutely tons of space inside the chassis and I suppose the system that we've built in here maybe doesn't quite do it justice. Um, some kind of crazy custom loop build would take up a lot more of that space and fill the case out probably a bit better. Uh, there's Obviously, loads of space at the front to install really thick radiators, same at the top as well, and even at the side of the motherboard, there's lots of room there for running multiple radiator setups. Something that I uh, forgot to mention at the beginning of the video is actually on the floor of the case towards the front, there is a bracket, a removable bracket for a pump or a pump reservoir combo. So again, fitting a large pump res combo in the front of there, that'll obviously fill the case out even more. So one thing that I'm not too keen on is this fully open back setup. Uh, I suppose if you've got any young kids running around and put their hands in here, they might you know, touch something that they're not supposed to and who knows what could happen there. And the other thing about this back section being so open is it, it actually, the case loses a bit of rigidity. You can actually see the flex in it at the back there. If there was at least some kind of stabilizers or some kind of struts or just something just to stiffen the case up a little bit more I would have been uh, a bit more pleased with that it's not really the greatest kind of strength or build quality you, you would like to see from a case that costs in excess of £250. Another area that I would have liked to have seen an improvement would be uh, some kind of shroud to cover the power supply up even if it is just maybe halfway at least to cover the cables and just make the system look a bit more tidy because obviously you can see straight into there and you know nobody really likes to look at untidy cables. And then on the other hand I really quite like the removable power supply bracket. It made installing the power supply into the system really simple. I mean it probably was never going to be difficult because you've got so much space but it just you know it helps and obviously without a power supply shroud you've got easy access to the cables in case you want to add to the system at a later date. So I mentioned about the cable management. There are kind of one or two things that I weren't too happy about with this case. I'm a real stickler for having the cabling looking neat and tidy both in the front and the back of the case as well. So these things did annoy me a little. If you are using an EATX motherboard like the TRX40 Aorus Master that we've used today, you're going to be struggling with cable management holes at the right hand side of the motherboard. With a standard size ATX motherboard, they'll be pretty easy to get to, but with that extra width of the EATX, we had real difficulty getting the 24 pin cable through and also the EPS power cables. I know this motherboard is slightly different because the EPS power cables are on the right hand side but it was really quite awkward getting those into position or through the uh, cable cutouts. That may have been down to the fact that we installed the radiator at the right hand side of the motherboard as well. If you maybe install the radiator at the front or in the top of the case that may not be such a problem. Also the, there is a lot of cable cutouts um, they all seem to be in the correct places. You've got plenty at the top. And like I say, down the right hand side of the motherboard, there's plenty there as well. And as you can see along the bottom of the chassis, there's plenty of cutouts there as well. But none of them have cable grommets on, which is, again, for me, it's a little bit disappointing. Um, a case of this kind of price range, you would expect at least the main cutouts to have the grommets on. and they do make the system look a little bit more tidy so yeah that's another thing I was a little bit disappointed about. And then around the back of the case there's absolutely nothing to cover those cables up with. We've obviously seen cases that don't cost as much as this 
make some kind of panel so you can tidy all your cables up, strap them down and then put a metal panel over to cover them up and there's no sign of that here. So any of the cable management that you do on this right hand side of the case, it will obviously be seen through this tempered glass side panel, well obviously depending on where you have your case positioned. There are some features of the case that I do like. The fact that you can completely remove the motherboard tray and then put it onto your bench or your desk to work on, that's a really good feature. I managed to install the motherboard, RAM, CPU and even the only one CPU cooler to the motherboard tray first and then it was really quite simple to slide it back in position and then just fix it in place with the thumb screws. The removable fan bracket at the front, again, that's a great idea. It would be really difficult trying to install fans uh, getting through the front panel. So having that bracket removable, I obviously like that. One thing to mention about that again is that you should really fit your fans to that front panel before doing anything else. If you install an all-in-one CPU cooler to the right hand side of the motherboard like we did, then it is really quite tricky getting that bracket into place. So yeah, that fans first at the front. There's no issue along the top of the case. With this top panel removed, there's loads of access to the top mounting radiators or fans. And like I said previously, the gap between this uh, inner top panel and the motherboard is very generous. So a really thick radiator in there would be no problem. Or if you want to run a radiator with a pull push combination of fans, then again, that is no problem at all. So as I mentioned previously, there's no uh, fans that come pre-installed in this system and that may be for some of you, you may have to factor that into the budget however if you're spending £250 plus on a case you may not have to worry about that and I guess that the majority of the people that will be using this case are probably going to be running some kind of custom loop inside and maybe have some kind of specific fans in mind already so it's not a worry and that kind of brings me on to my next question as well is I'm I'm still not really sure who this case is designed for. I can imagine there is some custom liquid cooling competitions where it might come in handy for building some kind of extreme loop inside. I can't really imagine like a gamer or somebody like that is going to have this sat at the side of them on their desk next to their monitor unless they have some kind of massive desk. So I guess that one scenario where it could be used is if you have some kind of dedicated gaming room with like an attack helicopter theme, then it'd be ideal for that. If you have a, a large desk, this would make a great centerpiece in the middle. It obviously shows off the hardware inside like pretty much like nothing else. So we did run some thermal performance tests on the chassis. We didn't go into the normal uh, detail that we would usually do because this is technically an open air test bench. So really the cooling is only as good as the cooler that you're using. We did find that the 360mm all-in-one CPU cooler in the orientation that it is in was adequate for the uh, AMD Ryzen Threadripper CPU even though it doesn't fully cover the heat spreader and we did try a couple of things removing panels to see if that affected temperature at all and it had virtually no effect whatsoever so I could safely say that running this case in this configuration is perfectly good for thermal performance. So in terms of noise levels, again, with this being an open chassis, there isn't really much you can do to dampen the noise coming from the fans. It all depends on the, uh, the type of fans you're using and obviously the fan curves that you've set. If you're using noisy fans at high RPM, you're obviously going to hear them. So overall, personally, it's not quite for me this case. It's a little bit too big and brash and shouty for my liking. I prefer the more understated and minimalist designs. However, I do realise that there will be certain people or certain scenarios where this will, this unique design will fit in perfectly for them. I mean, it is like nothing else. Uh, inside, there is plenty of space to fit all kinds of high-end hardware, custom water cooling, plenty of space for fans, more or less anything you can think of you could do in this case. So I hope you've enjoyed watching our review of the Thermaltake AH-T600. If you have, then don't forget to hit the like buttons and subscribe down below. You can also head over to the Kit Guru website where there is a full detailed written review about this case. And then there is also our 
Facebook page where you can discuss what you think of the AH T600 or just have a chat with other Kit Guru readers and viewers. I've been James for Kit Guru. Thank you for watching.